Let's take the phrase religious liberty and just define the words first. First, what is religion? Okay, what's religion? Um, religion is far more than worship. But that's what people want to make it today. And if you define freedom of religion as simply freedom of worship, then all my freedom stops the moment I walk out of mass, service, synagogue, or whatever. So religion involves every single area of my life. How I make my decisions, how I spend my money, how I use my time, how I raise my children, how I educate my kids, how I build my business. If I am truly a religious person, my faith affects every area. I can't compartmentalize it as simply worship. If we allow, and there are forces right now, that want to, in fact, I've seen the State Department memos, stop talking about freedom of religion and start talking about freedom of worship. Then you have a real problem. The problem is the Constitution doesn't guarantee freedom of worship. It guarantees freedom of religion. So what is religion? Uh, it is something that involves everything in my life. And so I would say freedom of religion is the freedom to practice I just believe the freedom to practice my faith and values and convert. That's an important part of religious freedom. I have been in probably 164 countries, I think, in the last 10 years. I've been in a number of countries that claim to have religious liberty. What they mean is we don't care if you practice your faith as long as you do it behind closed doors. If you're a Jew, you can worship Yeshua or, or Jeho you know, Jehovah behind closed doors. If you're a Christian, you can worship Jesus behind closed doors, but you cannot convert or convert anybody else. That's not, if, that, if that were true, then Saudi Arabia has freedom of religion because you can do stuff in secret there. It's not freedom of belief. It's freedom to practice. And that is a fundamental thing, and it affects everything that I do. The Bible says, Twice in scripture, Jesus went to every village preaching, teaching, and healing. Preaching would be evangelization. Teaching would be education. Healing would be health care. One third of Jesus' ministry was health care. God doesn't just care about our souls. He cares about our minds and our bodies. And Jesus is our savior, is not just our savior, he's our teacher and he's our healer. And it is not by accident that every country in the world, the first school and the first hospital, were started by Christian missionaries. Because we have a preaching, teaching, healing faith. And, and so we, we can't just say, I mean, I was arguing with the administration once and said, the audacity of you telling us how to do health care, the church has been doing health care 2,000 years longer than any government. <laughs> we invented the hospital. Do you, you know that? Christians invented the hospital. The church invented the hospital. That wasn't a government decision. The church invented the hospital. And so when I say religion, it involves preaching, teaching, and healing. And of course, Jesus said true religion, uh, or James says true religion cares for the widow and orphan. So that's another factor. Charity is part of my religion. So don't say that r religious liberty only applies to my worship. It also applies to my charity. It also applies to my, the way I educate, and it also applies to the way that I help the, the sick.